Hello everybody, welcome back. This is the next series of videos. Again, we're featuring the uh, Avondale Audio NCC 300. Uh, this time it's going to be a little bit different. Uh, this is going to be a, a Voyager type amplifier or designation if you like, whereby uh, there are links in the board either side so the power plus and minus plus and minus which would the power would come down and feed this regulator this regulator as, as we've noted before supplies these regulators supply this front end section here um, and what we're going to do we're going to disconnect this link these links and we're going to have a separate power supply feeding the output stage and these regulators uh, which lifts the sonic properties by a margin quite a considerable margin and I think they call it something like galvanic galvanic isolation uh, whereby <clears throat> the current drawn by this front end is not affecting these regulators oh the, sorry the the current being supplied to this output stage does not affect or draw down on these regulators that supply this front end section. So in effect it's completely it's two separate amplifiers. Uh, anyway that's the plan. There is a slightly more different as well, slightly um, uh, off-piste as they say. Traditionally we have a big transformer. This is a um, Again, an AST, an Avondale AST 540, I think it is, something like that. Uh, 35 volt 35, which gives you 50 volt rails. Uh, they also do a 42 42, which gives you 60 volts rails. Um, ultimately, that's a, a better lift sonically again. More power takes it to. 60 volt rails, I think it's about 150 watts. And the 50, 50 volt rails, it's around about 120, 130 watts, something like that. Uh, but traditionally you'd have the transformer, you have rectifiers, and then you go through some smoothing caps in whichever guise. Uh, this is a a cap 6 module, an Avondale cap 6 module, um, or this type of thing, these big 15,000 microfarad, 63 volts, and that feeds onto here. Well, what I'm going to propose to do, and I've done this quite successfully thus far, hence that's why I'm doing this video, I'm going to replace all this lot with a switch mode power supply. There's two of them actually, you need two because they're single rail and you couple the positive from one to the negative to the other and that becomes your zero volts then this becomes your minus volts and down here this becomes your positive volts and this is an LRS 248, it's 200 watts, 48 volts it is adjustable and in fact it's comfortable at 55 volts. Um, in my tests over the past month or so, um, even running a 300 flat out or audibly on, the, on my volume knob into my speakers, this hardly gets warm at all. It's completely silent, there's no hum, there's no noise and I'll go into the sonic properties in a later video. This is just the introduction. Uh, so what we are going to do is use these and <clears throat> let me do away with this for a second. So we're doing away with all this lot. We're not using that on this occasion as we would normally. Oh, this huge right transformer. Oh, <coughs> excuse me. 
uh, and we're going to use a um, Hi-Fi 2000 case to do this. And they come packaged something like that. Let me, let me scissors. This is a, a grand reveal, I suppose. A lot of people use these um, cases. Uh, they're pretty universal. This bit here, this chassis, case chassis extra, is an extra. That's an extra. So you can mount, mount all your amplifier equipment on here. It's nice and sturdy. I think it's, it looks to me like a two mil steel galvanized. Uh, and out of interest, um, these holes are all 10 millimeters apart. So when you're designing a mounting or you want to mount your equipment, everything should be 10 mil apart. So five is 50 mil, 10 is 100, blah, 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 blah. It just so happens <laughs> um, that these switch mode power supplies, the distance between the mounting holes, I think they're M, M3, might be M4, might be M4. Uh, that's an yeah, M4, I think it is. Yeah. Um, all these happen to be, I think this is 70 mil. And from there to there, or oh, this is 50 minutes. Let me get my ruler and let's look properly. So these are 50 mil centre to centre, and these are 150 centre to centre. So it just so happens that this will bolt on to this chassis plate perfectly. Um, this is this one's fixed to this one on double sided extruded foam. I have got some brackets that will go from here to here. I haven't fixed them yet. So this is all in Pro 10 stage. Um, but we'll cover that as we move along as I always do. <clears throat> Let's get this part for you just to show you uh, again this is not a promotion for hi-fi 2000 i've actually pur purchased this myself um, there's a rear plate i have to cut out an iec and drill a couple of holes for the phono input and the speaker outputs uh, this is one millimeter thick uh, uh, it's quite a nice durable coating textured Uh, mod you shop and there's it comes with its this is how you put it together which is what my videos are all about non-technical uh, this is how you do it as opposed to why you're doing it and how it does it there's some chassis rails here I think this has already been done on YouTube uh, I think somebody's already covered this but whilst I'm here I'll just will do it as in the first instance bear with me I have to say this is a, a 10 mil I, I purchased a 10 millimeter uh, front place a 2U 400 square case uh, what they call um, dissipate dissi dissipate I think you'll see that there are two finned heat sinks down each side and this is the this is the 10 mil aluminium front plate full width uh, 80 high 90 high I think it is 
uh, but I'll leave that enclosed for the time being to save it getting damaged. Uh, here's a top or bottom plate ventilated. I'll snip this one out. Vent ventilation, two vent slots slotted. Are they 20? They're 20 millimeters by two, so um, plenty of ventilation there. That comes with some feet, fixing screws. Uh, these are the heat sinks. Again, beautifully finished, I have to say. I'll just put one of these together whilst I'm here, just to show. So there's two of these. In this particular application, we're only going to be using, because the, these amp amplifiers I'm going to be building are mono block amplifiers so instead of being a stereo in one case it's one amplifier one module in each case so here's that goes there just like that i think yes another one there like that easy peasy Nothing difficult about this, is there? You don't have to have any technical expertise or knowledge to do this. All you need is a Phillips screwdriver. There are your screws and a little packet. There they are. 16 of them, I think. 2, 4, 6, 8, 2, 8 to 16. A Phillips screwdriver. I'm rattling through this. Uh, so you just don't do it all the way up, just drop these in their holes, respective holes, they're already drilled and tapped for you. Don't dip, nip them up yet. And that's the reason why you've got to float this one about. There you go. Sorry, I'm working through the camera here. I have no idea what the mathematical equation is for what what heat this heat sink will dissipate, uh, but it's all online. It will be an awful lot better than just in my last stereo amp. It will be an awful lot better than a piece of aluminium plate, 400 by 200, five mil thick. Well, that's the plan. Uh, if you remember, if you did watch the previous video on the 300 build, uh, I ended up with a bias of 2.2. In actual fact, in room, in real time, I had to wind it back to 2.15, and it's still in use now, sounding better and better by the day. It takes these um, Avondale 300s or any Avondale amplifier module, be it whichever, the 200, the NCC 200, 220, whichever, they do take, and I'm, I'll use <coughs> the phrase, a long time to bed in and sound their best. So there's one side of the heatsink done. Uh, I won't bore you any more with that. We'll move on just to something else. This is the introduction. There's more nuts and, nuts and bolts and fixing bits and Allen keys and all sorts for the kit, which we'll cover at a later date, or a later video. Here is the second heat sink. There is another lid or, or bottom here, under here. The rest is just packaging. So I'm just gonna move this all to one side. all these nuts bolts I'm gonna progress onto something else in this initial video 
Right. I think we'll end up with about three videos uh, in this in this series for the NCC 300 switch mode power supply amplifier mono block. Let me move that out of the way. Now, so this is the, the chassis I'll be working on. So, as I said, here's the power supply. Here's a heat sink. And the, and the chassis fits in. There are four holes. Counter sink through the bottom. Uh, you can use this chassis either this way, as you can see, with the edges bent up, or you can use it that way with the edges bent down. Obviously, with the edges bent down, you lose 10 mil, 8 to 10 mil of height. Now, in this application, I need as much height as I can, and there's not a lot that I'm fixing through this. Um, sorry, I'll keep knocking this camera. So, I'm going to be fixing it way round and I'm going to go ahead and fix my power supply which is half made up so I have me screws of an Allen key. This would be a little bit fiddly, but it's it's as simple as this. You align the holes on the power supply with some holes here. I don't know if that's clear. Again, you can see here that the that the power supply threaded nut, it's called a nut cert, nut cert on the chassis of the power supply aligns with the holes on this chassis plate. So we'll start by just dropping these in. I'm not doing them up tight initially. I'm just aligning them all, absolutely perfect fit. And now we can let's go around, just nip them up. Just nip, don't have to over tighten them. We're not holding up the Golden Gate Bridge. So there is the first part of the amplifier. The second part of the amplifier, I've already gone ahead and done some bits on here before I started this video. Um, this particular, this side, I've drilled and tapped four holes. This just happens to be, I think it's M6, because that's what I had, and I have appropriate M6 screws, um, which will be used to mount this spreader now you can see I've drilled some holes through the back, through the back, four holes, which just happened to correspond to the four holes in the back of the heatsink. Now I'm going to go, and that's how it's going to go together. I will cover. There we go, like that, and then we'll have the rear face plate goes on the back. the AEC and on the front we'll have our 10 millimeter aluminium front plate and this will sit on something like that uh, so that's the the plan uh, you've seen all this before I was going to use uh, one of my T sections for this, as I've you've seen before in my other videos. Um, but I, for the sake of space, 
uh, and this is predominantly used by Avondale for their amplifiers I thought I'd use this it's nice and compact it's slightly smaller and this fits on there like that with the output devices and then this will bolt through like that so that the, the heat will be spread across the whole of that heat sink and I'm hoping to be able to wind the bias up a bit it might this case might not be, in, be enough to get me 2.4 volts of offset we'll see I'm not sure yet uh, <clears throat> but the idea is um, I'm getting some pressure uh, from the from the lovely lady of the house well, she's fed up I've got a living room full of huge boxes huge five view boxes and I'm trying to get down to say I need four amplifiers so I'm, and this appears to be a sonic improvement over a transformer in my opinion now I'd like if you would to um, make your comments uh, about this whether you prefer switch mode power so I mean a lot of mainstream um, companies I've, I've read up uh, Meridian a British company started off many 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 way way back in the 70s early 70s were using switch mode power supplies for their power amplification and preamps blah 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 uh, as consequently lots of others uh, Lin use switch modes cord use switch modes and many other manufacturers are now on to switch mode power supplies so this is realistically a cheap and cheerful first venture i have done some experiments it does seem to work very very well in this application um, it's something that i wouldn't mind some input it's new for me if you're a specialist out there uh, there may be a better power supply this is cheap they are when i bought these this was i've been thinking about doing this for well over a year when i bought these these were 18 UK pounds each. They're now about 35. In a year, they've gone up tremendously. And I don't know whether that's just economic forces or people are using more of these. But if you want to make a comment, give me some feedback. I'll be very grateful for that. Um, but this is the introduction, as I said, to this build. Uh, I'm going to go and build up these now. This power amp module and put all the transistors in I'll test it put it in situ put all the ancillaries on wire it up uh, over the next couple of videos so thanks for that now just out of interest uh, I'm and there will be a second series off of this whereby these two switch modes are going to be the supply for the output stage here and there are two much smaller 48 volt switch mode power supplies for these front ends for this front end and they're going to look little little things they are um these are say so these are 200 watts 48 uh they also meanwhile also do a 50 48 so little tiny they're about 10 pounds each 10 uk pounds 10 10 12 pounds um and we're going to run four of these and we're just going to see how this performs as opposed to a Voyager with huge toroidal transformers, huge great capacitor banks um, and all the ancillary kit that goes with that to get you your 50, 55 volts. So for now, hope you're going to find this of interest. It's going to be interesting for me and we thoroughly enjoy it. Thank you for your comments thus far on my other videos uh, if you'd like to subscribe and uh, give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down please make a com. i've always said it uh, i don't mind ridicule or being chastised it's i thoroughly enjoy it it may be of interest to others uh, and i don't go into too much technical detail whatsoever it's this is how you do it abc one two three so for now on a lovely day today is the 16th uh, it's a Saturday morning, the sun is shining in the UK, very nice. I'll see you in the next video.
part one. This is the introduction. Part one comes next. All the very best. Keep safe. Keep well. This is Laverda, the implementer. See you soon.